Ever wondered how computer programs are designed? How do they solve complex tasks so efficiently? Welcome to the fascinating world of algorithms, the secret source behind the magic of computing. An algorithm, in essence, is a set of rules or procedures designed to solve problems or complete tasks. Imagine it like a recipe that guides your computer through each step of a process, leading it from start to finish. Four key characteristics define every algorithm. Firstly, they are finite. This means an algorithm will always reach an end after a certain number of steps. Secondly, they are well-defined. Every step in an algorithm is precise and leaves no room for ambiguity. Thirdly, algorithms involve input and output. They take in data, process it, and spit out a result. Lastly, they are effective. For any valid input, an algorithm should always be capable of producing the desired output. To better illustrate this, let's take an example of a common problem. Sorting a list of numbers in ascending order. Output. Scene script. Consider the problem of sorting a list of numbers in ascending order. One solution is the bubble sort algorithm. Imagine you're holding a deck of cards, but they're all muddled up. You want to sort them in ascending order, from the lowest to the highest. The bubble sort algorithm does exactly that. It's a simple method used in computer science to sort lists or arrays. Here's how it works. First, we start at the beginning of the list. Picture each card as a number on our list. Our goal is to get the highest card, or in this case the largest number, to the end of the list. Next, we compare each pair of adjacent elements. So we look at the first card and the one next to it. If they're in the right order, we leave them as they are. But if they're in the wrong order, we swap them. This means the larger number moves one step closer to the end of the list. We move down the list, repeating this process for each pair of cards. Once we've gone through the entire list, the highest card, or the largest number, has bubbled its way to the end. But we're not finished yet. We need to go back to the beginning and start the process all over again. Why? Because we can't guarantee all the other cards are in the right order. We only know the highest one is where it should be. So we repeat the steps comparing and swapping until we make a pass through the list without any swaps. This means every card is in the right place and our list of numbers is sorted in ascending order. And voila, that's bubble sort for you. It's a bit like organizing a bookshelf, one book at a time until everything is in order. And there you have it. That's how the bubble sort algorithm solves the problem. But how do we visualize this process? Enter flowcharts, a visual tool to represent the sequence of steps and decisions in a process. Quite like a roadmap, flowcharts guide us through the logical progression of a task, from start to finish. The beauty of these charts lies in their simplicity. They use straightforward, universally recognized symbols to depict various steps or actions. Let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with these symbols. We have the oval, marking the start or end of a process. Then there's the rectangle, signifying a task or action to be performed. Up next is the diamond, a symbol for decision points, where the flowchart branches out based on a condition. Lastly, we have arrows, directing the flow of the process. These symbols serve as the building blocks of our flowchart, shaping the narrative of our process. Now let's use a flowchart to represent the bubble sort algorithm we discussed earlier. A flowchart for the bubble sort algorithm would look something like this. Imagine an oval at the top, representing the start of the process. This is where our list of unsorted numbers enters the picture. From here, we move to a rectangle, which signifies an action. In this case, setting a variable, let's call it swapped, to false. This variable is going to help us track whether we've made any swaps in our current pass through the list. Next, we move to another rectangle, representing the initiation of a loop that goes through the list of numbers. This is where the magic starts. Inside this loop, we have a diamond, the symbol for a decision. Here, we're comparing two adjacent numbers in our list. If the first number is greater than the second, they're in the wrong order. If they are in the wrong order, we follow one arrow out of the diamond to a rectangle that signifies the action of swapping these two numbers. After the swap, we set our swapped variable to true, indicating that a swap has occurred. Then we loop back to our diamond for the next pair of numbers. If the two numbers are in the correct order, we follow the other arrow out of the diamond, bypassing the swap action and looping back to compare the next pair. Once we've gone through the entire list, we have another decision to make, represented by a second diamond. This time we're checking our swapped variable. 
If it's true, meaning we've made at least one swap in our pass through the list, we need to go through the list again. We follow the arrow back to the start of our loop. If swapped is false, meaning we've made no swaps and our list is sorted, we follow the arrow to an oval, the end of our process, and our list of numbers is now sorted. And that's how a flowchart can visually represent the logic of an algorithm. But what's the relationship between algorithms and flowcharts? Algorithms and flowcharts go hand in hand in the world of computer programming. They are like the yin and yang of solving problems, each complementing the other, forming a complete picture of the solution. Consider an algorithm as a recipe, a step-by-step -step guide to solving a problem. Each step in this recipe corresponds to a specific shape in a flowchart. For instance, starting the recipe is akin to the oval shape in a flowchart, marking the beginning of a process. The actions or processes in the recipe, like stirring the pot or adding ingredients, these are symbolized by rectangles. Decisions such as checking if the soup is hot enough correspond to the diamond shape in a flowchart. It's a neat visual shorthand for the algorithm, isn't it? But flowcharts aren't just about pretty shapes. They serve a crucial purpose in the realm of documentation. They are like a visual language, a universal one, that communicates the logic of a solution to everyone, regardless of their programming proficiency. It's like having a map that guides you through the maze of an algorithm, showing you the start, the route, the decision points, and the end. What's more, both algorithms and flowcharts represent the logical flow of a process. They give us a clear, step-by-step -step representation of how to get from point A, the problem, to point B, the solution. They break down complex problems into manageable steps, making it easier to understand and analyze the process. It's like having a GPS for problem solving, guiding you turn by turn until you reach your destination. In essence, the relationship between algorithms and flowcharts is a symbiotic one. They work together to make problem solving a systematic and efficient process. One provides the step-by-step -step guide, the other visualizes it, making it easier for us to comprehend and communicate the solution. Now that you understand the relationship between algorithms and flowcharts, let's discuss some guidelines on creating flowcharts. Creating a flowchart is not just about drawing shapes and arrows. There are certain guidelines to follow. Now, let's dive into the details. Firstly, we have the starting and ending points of a process. These are represented by ovals. Every flowchart begins and ends with an oval, marking the inception and conclusion of the process. Moving on, rectangles are your go-to shapes for illustrating processes or actions. Each rectangle stands for a specific action that needs to be taken in the process. It's where the real work happens. Next, we encounter decision points in our process, depicted as diamonds. These are the moments where a condition is evaluated, and the flowchart diverges based on the outcome. It could be a simple yes or no question, or a more complex condition. But remember, each diamond should have at least two exit points, each leading to a different path. Arrows play a crucial role in flowcharts. They show the direction of the process, connecting all the different shapes and guiding you through the sequence of steps. While these shapes and arrows form the backbone of a flowchart, annotations add the flesh and blood. These are textual explanations or clarifications attached to different steps. They're like little notes to yourself or anyone else reading the flowchart, making it easier to understand. Finally, consistency is key when creating flowcharts. Stick to the same symbols throughout the flowchart for the same types of steps. It's like speaking the same language all through, ensuring that your flowchart is easily decipherable. Now, you're armed with the knowledge to create effective, easy-to-follow flowcharts. But remember, like any other skill, it takes practice to get it right. So don't shy away from drafting, redrafting, and refining your flowcharts. Remember, a well-designed flowchart can effectively communicate the logic of a solution, making it easier for others to understand. So keep these guidelines in mind and start creating your own flowcharts with confidence. Algorithms and flowcharts play a critical role in computer programming. To recap, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure or a set of rules for solving a specific problem or completing a particular task. It's characterized by being finite, well-defined and effective, taking input and producing output. A perfect example of an algorithm is the bubble sort, a simple sorting algorithm that repeatedly steps through the list, compares adjacent elements and swaps them if they are in the wrong order. Flowcharts, on the other hand, are visual representations of the sequence of steps and decisions needed to perform a process. 
They use different shapes to represent various types of steps or actions, making them a powerful tool for visualizing algorithms, like our bubble sort example. The relationship between algorithms and flowcharts is symbiotic. Each step in an algorithm can be represented by a corresponding shape in a flowchart and vice versa. Next time you come across a complex problem, think about how you can use an algorithm and a flowchart to find a solution. Remember, every complex problem has a solution if you break it down into simpler steps.